All right, so let's get it started. Hey, everyone, thanks for joining this uh, Facebook Live session with uh, me and Nicholas Morales. If you listen to the podcast, you hear him frequently, especially the monthlies he's doing now. I thought we should do a live um, where we just talk about what's going on. I had a couple of stuff we want to talk about with the nature of practice and how things are affected with the coronavirus outbreak and, and all that craziness. So, uh, Nicholas, first of all, how are you doing? I'm hanging in there, held up uh, at home. My wife's working over my corner. She's been uh, working from home for the last few weeks, too. So what is it, Tuesday? I'm I'm good, you know, healthy, right? That's all. That's the best thing we can say right now. Yeah, and, and for a lot of viewers, uh, this may be the first time and only time ever they'll see Nicholas yeah. without a suit on and a tie. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, uh, it's been a new reality for me that, and I, I've, I've actually had people ask me, are you still getting, putting on a suit every day, even though you work from home and don't go anywhere anymore? And I, and I said, I say, no, right now, uh, it's mostly t-shirts, maybe a dress shirt here and there. Cause sometimes it's a psychological part of it all. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice to, to feel like it's normal, even though you're like, when was the last time I was outside? maybe outside of going to the grocery store. So you're right, John, don't get used to it. <laughs> I think when you and I go to uh, a, a look conferences, we're the two guys in New Orleans where it's super hot and sweaty and <laughs> we're not even full on suits. <laughs> but so you know, and, 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 it's totally. So let's get it started. Uh, I mean, the main thing is about, you know, a lot of immigration lawyers are solo practitioners and it is a difficult time uh, you're a solo practitioner as well. Like, uh, what kind of thoughts do you have on that subject and how are you dealing with just life as a solo in this environment? Well, I think the, uh, you know, virus and the shelter in place and lockdown is really kind of sh shining a light on our practices just in general, right? If you were a, a solo that um, had a lot of overhead, you were a solo that threw a lot of money at things because th times were going good, um, I think a lot of things are probably crashing down. Um, I think people are in a situation where they really have to assess, you know, their overhead. They have to understand, you know, how much money is coming in versus how much is going out. So for me personally, as a solo, and I think John, you're very similar. I always made sure to keep my overhead very, very low. Um, I made sure that there was never anything that I couldn't get out under if anything happened. Um, and that's, you know, no long-term subscriptions, no contracts, even the lease I have with my office uh, here downtown was kind of a month-to-month -month, uh, agreement more than anything. And so for me personally, as a solo, kind of always being in survival mode, I think I was ready to pivot to what we're doing now. Whereas I think for a lot of other solos, and they've been doing these this last few weeks, you know, what do I do with you know, the, the office leaves, what I do with all of, yeah. you know, my staff, my, my, you know, the contract work that comes in, et cetera. And so I think that's what I've been advising solos to really do is the sooner you have difficult conversations with people, the sooner everything else will work out because we all know that payroll is oftentimes the biggest overhead people have. Yeah. Well, you know, I've actually been getting a lot of calls from people because I've never made a secret that I have a virtual office. And I like working from home. And I, I get, I'm getting calls every day uh, from practitioners like, well, my lease is ending or I just renewed it, but I, I want to break it because uh, we can't go to work. And secondly, like, yeah, it just kind of makes sense, you know, not having a full on office lease that's you're locked in and uh, it's really expensive. Uh, it doesn't make sense anymore. And so how do you adjust? Now, people always used to tell me I can't work from home because like I just won't pay attention. But now that they've done it, a lot of them are getting used to it. And one important factor is when you work at home and not paying mm -hmm. a, a crazy lease amount, you just get a bigger home. So like save the money and you get a bigger apartment, bigger house, a backyard, just reinvest in your lifestyle uh, and, and work from home. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. I used to have people tell me, oh, you know, you're going to like, you know, grow up and need an office one day. It's like, you're still starting. But I, that was never in my game plan to like full on have an office and stuff like that because of the, how nimble you could be in this kind of situation and kind of my secret uh plan that i have that gave me a heads up is not having that massive overhead which a lot of people are get, learning about now and that required me not to need as many clients uh, as i did as a lot of other people do because i don't have that overhead so uh, overhead's a major issue that people have to start dealing with and the consequences of that for the commercial real estate market are going to be pretty severe i think 
in the coming months, both with, mm -hmm. uh, to talk about this, I think the other live video I did, but uh, both offices and like supermarkets. I mean, now that they're doing delivery and people are getting used to that, do we need to have a big supermarket at every corner? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of changes that are going to come from this experience and some for the better, hopefully. Well, and I think you hit the nail on the head, John, where you, you were, you know, you know, ridiculed or critiqued that, oh, once eventually you'll go to the brick and mortar, you'll get a traditional office, you'll be locked into a three or five year commercial lease, et cetera, et cetera. When in fact, the world has simply just come around to the way you've been operating your business. I think uh, if you grew up having to look after yourself, if you put yourself through school, if you took out massive loans for law school, if you came out with, you know, uh, uh, just this, you, know, you had to build from nothing. And I think when you do that, you're always aware of um, what you need to survive and then what you don't need. And yeah. so to your point, I think people that are uh, kind of having this, what I always refer to as the 20th century approach to building a business is I think they're getting a massive crash course in the 21st century approach, which is we as attorneys, uh, provide a service and that service has to do with our experience our mind our critical thinking everything else is unnecessary we don't need an office we don't need a conference room we don't need staff to bring somebody a cup of water or a cup of coffee all of that is expendable and so it doesn't mean that you can't kind of find a, a, a you know a middle ground but i think uh, if you are nimble i think when you We've lived through a recession like our generation has in 2008. Let not, you know, not to mention a 20, 20 year endless war, 9 11, and now this. I mean, who wants to get a mortgage anymore? Who wants to sign a five year anything? If you're not always thinking about the what if, I think um, you set yourself up to be, you know, a little bit more over leverage. So um, I'm sure those calls are interesting because people tell you, I never thought I would ever do this, and now I'm doing it, and I actually like it. Right. Yeah. yeah the, the part where they like it and it kind of is eye opening like wow I can't believe I would do that like even me I, I would just go to my office to pick up mail and the office said we're just doing free forwarding of mail and they start doing that I'm like I can't believe I wasted my time even driving to pick up the mail when they could just mail it to me <laughs> like, it, they're doing it free right now because of coronavirus but it was only a couple bucks per envelope so it's like and I, I waste so much gas money for no reason so um, and you know, you use that time, you know, beneficial either to take a nap or relax, read a book or do more work, whatever it is. There's no point in spending time in a car to go someplace unless you have to, uh, especially in a place like LA with traffic is so, so nasty. Now with regard to Absol that absolutely. Uh, absolutely, like, uh, one thing that popped up in the, um, the coronavirus bill that they passed is this, I think $10,000 giveaway for businesses. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure how it is, but I just would recommend, um, you know, not being accounted. Everyone should file that cause the money's going to drop really quick. Um, if you go to SBA uh, website, um, it seems like you give 10,000 minimum and it's yours. It's like no personal guarantee. You just got to say, I used it. It's, it's kind of like a joke, but I, how the, right, the regulations on it, but at the same time, it looks like they're just giving money away to small businesses. So, uh, it's something to look into if you're sole proprietorship, even not even a corporate entity. Uh, they're giving away that money. Have you have you taken advantage of that process, or are you still looking into it? Yeah. So right now, I'm 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 okay. Um, I I have uh, money coming in from existing clients on payment plans. I have a few new clients that just signed. World was kind of closing. They were kind of on on uh, the cusp. Of that. So right now, I'm okay. I have a couple of uh, adjustments going out probably this week. Um, but I have kind of kept my eye on these micro loans and these loans that whether it's the city yes, of Los Angeles for us here in LA, money. Uh, money, the bro. city's <laughs> offering. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's almost like, uh, because again, the overhead concept of not having any, it's not like I need those loans to then just pay yeah. other people. Um, so I'm I think, right. I think they will run out. I think, uh, uh, this entire experience has been an indictment on uh, the modern American has been living paycheck to paycheck or pay yeah. period to pay period or bill to bill. And as soon as you have a two week, let alone a three or four months shock to that kind of bell delicate balance, fragile ecosystem, you know, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I think I read that 
60% of the GDP uh, in this country is uh, service industry. And so yeah. with, with, you know, a, a projected 40 million plus people filing in front of I mean, it's, it's going to be a catastrophe, catastrophe. So for us, small business owners, people that do need to keep the lights on, feed our family, pay our, you know, bills, whenever they need to be paid. Um, I think it's smart to kind of keep an eye haven't done anything with them yet. I'm, I'm still going through the, uh, if I push my student loans, you know, this, uh, this pack, part of the uh, offer in the package is to push our student loans through, I think, October. I've been reading and being like, all right, are you going to screw us some way? Is this legit? Just like you're going to shut it off for six months or four months, whatever it is. And so that's where I'm at in my kind of trying to benefit from a package just because I don't think this government actually cares. So I'm, I'm always ready for uh, whatever the care it is for the stick to come and hit me on side of the head. I think the payoff that, cause they're going to bail out all the top people. So they're giving $1 to, us, $1 to them, but it's kind of just to keep us happy. Cause they'll give $10,000 to small businesses, but they're going to give like $10 billion to a bunch of biz, other businesses. So it's kind of like a payoff to calm us down. So they can maybe feel like we did something. <laughs> Because even the thousand dollar check, it's a tax credit for your next next uh, tax. So it's not really a giveaway. You're you're paying. You're, you're not. It's net loss. There's nothing coming on there. They're just forwarding you some money, loaning some money early. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's again, that's when being nimble and being flexible, you're get you're patting yourself on the back because if you're over leverage and you just have to take those kind of you know those loans or those you know those freebies. Yeah. Um, you all, there's always going to be something on the backside. I mean, to trust this administration to look after normal people, you're just completely ignoring the last three and a half years, right? <laughs> and, and along with that, uh, what I do is every 12 to 15 months, I apply for a new zero interest credit card. And I, so I just got one from US Bank that was 20, 20 months zero interest. I don't necessarily need it, but I'd rather have that backup at zero interest. I mean, it's never in history in the world we could borrow tens of thousands of dollars at zero interest for over a year. It's like a it's not going to last and just kind of shows how our economy is really like, it's not real. It's this, the fact that we just borrow money so easily and spend it. And that's one of the causation of this paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. Cause you could borrow money so easily, but that's eventually have to come to an end. So we really need to adjust ourselves to that. And, and, you know, I'll, I'll uh, segue into some of these notes that I read because I think, that idea is something that new attorneys and law students specifically need to really be mindful of. Because if you're a brand new attorney, six months out, maybe you had a contract position, maybe you were let go from a good job because they just had to, you know, take care of their, 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 they had to basically start playing defense. Um, or a law, law student, and these are really, really valuable times to really assess where you are and if being an immigration attorney is what you want to be, if uh, going into immigration law is what you want to do after you get out of law school, I think right now is the time to really look around and, and understand what you actually need. What is your minimum amount of money you need to be able to survive month mm -hmm. to month and go from there? Because I think it's going to be really, really important for, you know, people coming out and the, the next generation of, of attorney specifically to try to not only keep themselves busy, but keep themselves marketable. You're, you're big in mentorship as am I, you're big in talking to uh, young people because that was us, right? We know what it's like to come out with no network, no momentum and be like, all right, how do I break into this? You know, yeah. and how do I do it? What can I make a living? And so I'm real, I've been putting myself in their position and I think the best thing they need to, they need to be doing is just completely readjust their ideas of what they think they need versus, or want versus what they actually need. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, it's a big readjustment. Uh, it's, it's doing things completely differently than was done before. Uh, so innovation is needed. Uh, and uh, just kind of the confidence to push through it. I mean, a lot of people are going to be frozen out of fear. And it's happening even if people are practicing right now, they're frozen. But you got to break out of that freeze and think, what can I do? And you're a leader of your firm, you're a leader of your family. Um, you got to do something. Um, anything is legal, you got to do it to push it out there, uh, whether it's getting out of your comfort zone and doing videos like this. I, I never liked doing 
Facebook or just live videos because I'm afraid I'm going to say something wrong and that's going to have consequences, you know, especially because we're talking about legal stuff. So I always record and edit, mm -hmm. but I'm like, you know, live has its own uh, benefits to it. It notifies everyone's listening on all these social media. So let's just do that and see what happens. And it's been a success. And so uh, it's just, I guess something new. That's a, it was kind of scary for me getting out of my comfort zone. Uh, but that's just like the tip of the iceberg of stuff you could do to kind of uh, do things differently. And law students really need a, and I tell my students at Pepperdine, I like constantly like, think about marketing, think about connecting, think about networking, um, you know, and then spare time, study the law at night, study a day, uh, go in groups that could help you just do everything you can to do things differently, but in, with innovation and, and just, you said, get yourself in, in the door because it's really hard to break in. And some people do it weekly. They try to join a firm, send resumes to a million places. I think that system is done with just mailing out resumes or emailing out resumes. That's not a, a, a beneficial way of doing things for getting a good job or, or even thinking about a job necessarily is, is not the way to go. Nowadays, maybe independent contractor well, temporarily is the way to go. Who knows? Well, if you think about it and you know, our offices do the same thing. There's so much new information coming out almost hourly, whether it's from the fed, the DOJ, USCIS, the state department, that if I'm, uh, you know, an out of work, uh, young attorney, immigration attorney, uh, or even a law student, to be honest, I'm a 3 I have a lot of immigration background. Um, I'm writing blogs. Yeah. I'm, I'm reaching out to uh, attorneys all over my city and saying, hey, I know through these times, there's a lot out there. I would be happy to help you for no money if, you know, if you can afford it, right? Because you have to crawl before you can walk. But let me help you with your social media. Let me help you with your marketing because what we're seeing because we're all locked in, you know, our homes is everybody's dying for information. And as immigration attorneys, because they are still not closing the, you know, the courts indefinitely, um, there's still this idea that USCIS may reopen in like, you know, a week and a half or whatnot. Yeah. Um, that if you are reeling as an owner or maybe somebody a little bit older, real handle on, kind of your online social media presence or blasting information, then how great would it be to have, you know, someone say, hey, I'm a 3L at the local law school, or hey, I'm, I just got out, I, I let go because I was only six months in and they had to let me go. But um, I really like immigration and I'd be happy to like send write-ups for different things, right? Because like you're saying, getting in the door will always be the first step in getting a job. How you get in the door is changing because of the current situation. Or to still be uh, game. Um, your mantra of oh, I don't know this immigration attorney on LinkedIn. Let me reach out to him and have a conversation. Right? Let me see what yeah. you're about. Right? You've seen how effective that's. Now imagine we're all locked up. Everybody's dying. And imagine you get an email from a law student. Or a new attorney says, "Hey, I'd love to maybe chat for thirty minutes. Have you got time just to, you know, basically do what we always tell, you know, young people to do: ask, go out for coffee, get get an attorney to talk about themselves for, you know, thirty minutes, forty-five minutes. Now more than ever, attorneys have that time. And um, again, people should should shouldn't think that life as they know it is over and that they just hunker in place and do nothing. This is the time when what you're doing in a year from now we'll really, really start a resume and on your career because you didn't, didn't sit down and say, well, nobody's hiring. So what am I going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't just sit on your hands and not do things. I mean, now the bar was canceled bar exam in New York, New Jersey, California is probably going to be canceled. Um, and who knows who, who would want to go in a room with a thousand people. Was there a rescheduled date on that, John? Or are they, uh, was, that, was there a rescheduled date on that? Or are they just pushing it to the fair? I, I know I just read a headline that New York and Jersey did that, but I didn't look into it. And I'm, I'm guessing California is going to do it too. Uh, but uh, with that free time of not studying for the bar and postponing, if that is the case, um, as you said, there's all these opportunities to, to, to learn new marketing methods, branding, letting firms know you could do this kind of stuff for them because a lot of them are not going to do it on their own. Uh, and uh, you know, every, every bad thing is always has a you know, silver lining to it to take advantage of. And so you got to constantly look for the positive and think about that not to get bogged down in the depressing aspect that we're, you know, we're going through a pandemic, you know, it's kind of a crazy situation. Just don't think about it. Just think about how you could be more successful personally and help other people along the way. I mean, it, 
life is nothing but adjusting to adversity, right? Yeah. Difficult things happen and how you respond and grow from that. So if you've had any type of adversity in your life, and these are the these are some of the points I like to touch on in you know my monthly videos that we've been doing the last few months is you know really turn into the conflict really turn into the scary part of what you're dealing with and go into it don't run away from it because it's going to be there and the mental and emotional space that stuff takes is going to be 10 times worse than attacking the problem um if you if you know you're you're on let's say you're up for unemployment you have a couple of months maybe the landlord's giving you some time on um your rent Okay, if that's me, all right, I'm looking on uh, for DocuView jobs online minimum, right? I don't care what I need to do, I'm going to do it. Because the way I came up and the life I had coming into being a lawyer was all about handling my business and doing what I needed to do to take care of myself. Yeah. And so it's, it's really a testament to when this does end, whether it's in six months or two years, whatever it's going to be when life quote unquote goes back to normal, this time people are going to want to know what you did and although it's going to be very easy for all of us to say hey we know it was hard you know you had you were you got a job at costco because that was the only job hiring and uh, you had to you know pay your bills or whatever i get it and you were doing some legal stuff on the side but you know we're all going to understand that but for th those of us that really try to lean into the problem and try to find creative ways like you were saying to kind of stay in this world and, and continue to connect with your network. I mean, think about what uh, the generation of immigration attorneys who are ready to, to retire. Mm -hmm. This federal government was making it so much more difficult. People are saying, you know what, I've had enough of it. If this guy wins again, maybe I'll just hang it up. Yeah. They've now, they're now going to learn how to work from home. Maybe have somebody at the office. Maybe they'll live in a different state and just you know, telecommunicate when they need to, right? Because they're learning that. And so there's going to be such a shift. And if you can market yourself as being a self-starter, good productivity, you don't need somebody over your shoulder, that you're not scared to make mistakes, send a draft in this to your boss and then they cut it up and then give it back to you. That's really gonna allow you to kind of flourish in whenever normal becomes, uh, whenever we go back to normal. And, it, and so I just, I, I find, go ahead. No, what you said just popped in my head. If, if someone is telling you they wanna hire somebody, they don't need to open up that office space anymore and get a desk for them and all this kind of stuff. They'll say, okay, you work from home. Uh, we have, you know, files, secure file transfer setups ready. Uh, and that way the overhead offices are going to go down that aspect too, making it more uh, likely that they're going to bring people aboard because the cost of, of bringing on board a client is, or a new employee is, is going to going to cheapen. It's going to get less because of the technology. Oh yeah. And I mean, we're always going to, you know, we're an essential service for a reason. We're going to be here when it's good times, when it's bad times. And the, just the infrastructure of the, the law practice has been changing for 10 plus years, right? Big law has been dying and people are shifting um, to kind of, again, that 20th century model. And so if you're young or if you're uh, new, to this game, you know, get ahead of that curve. Like you're saying, you know, oh, I can work from home. I have a good setup. I'm very disciplined. Because if you're not disciplined, then maybe yeah. that's something you can work on during this time. Yeah, exactly. You know, and from the standpoint of being a solo or being a, uh, a uh, running a firm, like you're saying, you should also, if you're watching this, you should also be thinking at home. Because I'm now used to this kind of new normal with, with people working from home, how could I shave down cost how can I, you know, I could still have people maybe meet in the gal or in the office once a week, right? Or once every two weeks or once a month so that there is that fraternization because that's also a big part of, you know, the, the professional space is, you know, the human interaction. Um, but at the same time, we can start seeing ways that if you're trying to think of how can I maintain my business, I got, you know, four paralegals, two associates, a receptionist, a secretary, I got a, a runner, you know, you now see, start thinking, hmm, okay, well, I might have to start combining some of those positions, one, and two, maybe I, I uh, can hire people, and maybe all of those things I was covering, now I don't need to cover because they are commuting from home, or, you know, there's, there's so many ways to think about this, and you and I do this all the time, we try to brainstorm uh, when there is problems to say, hey, just because we haven't done it this way, doesn't mean we shouldn't try. And hopefully this 
shelter in place in this kind of crazy time we're living in, people aren't, you know, hiding within themselves and just saying, okay, I can't wait to be it to be over because I'm going to go back to know how it was. As you would agree, John, nothing will go back to how it was. Everything will change for a long time. And yeah. so it's in everybody's best interest to start thinking about that change. Yeah, I mean, we have to prepare that. This is just, uh, this pandemic is just uh, a, a, a taste of what it's to come potentially, especially because the world is so interconnected with flights. Um, there's no hiding from this. This is going to happen again. Uh, just, we got to be able to deal with it better and, and prepare. You know, I was talking to my wife and, you know, she was talking about how scary the whole situation is. But I was, I was thinking of telling her, like, you know, this is the human condition. Normally, human beings go through crap like this all the time. In the U.S., we've been blessed. We've had a period of a peace internally. I mean, we cause a lot of chaos and warfare across the world. But internally, uh, if you're in the middle class uh, in the U.S., you don't have to deal with a lot of these problems. It's just, you know, as they say, first world problems usually happen. But, uh, you know, immigration lawyers in particular have a special nuance and appreciation for this because we've seen this, this chaos in our clients. When Ebola broke out, when we were getting TPS for people from, from West Africa, uh, getting TPS for people from Yemen, from Syria, from Central America, and so, so all those kind of TPS, or people with asylum, we know people do this, and we see how strong they are, and they come through it. Even the people, you know, walk across uh, Latin America, Central America to come to the border here, and all this craziness, and they just to come here to bring their kids, as bad as some aspects of society make that sound. It really shows how tough people are and how we could adapt, even with nothing. Because people at the border have nothing. They just have the clothes on their backs. And they're, they're pushing through. They come here. They build their lives here. And then they, for, maybe we've seen it for decades in Los Angeles. So we could get through it. It's kind of hard because we've had a comfortable life. And it's hard stepping back from that. Uh, but the reality is human beings, our power is on our adaptability and our able to, ability to communicate and, and be adaptable. I think those are really powerful. And communication is a consequence of our adaptability because that, and that's what led to our power over the world as it is so um, it's all doable don't get bogged down and frozen just keep thinking how could I use my skills my communication abilities uh, first to make them better and then to work with others to overcome what's going on right now there are people who are not going to do it there are people who are not going to make it um, you know it's just it's kind of Darwinian uh, but we could help those people but at the same time you got to think about yourself your family then your community uh, and this is what this video is about, the community aspect. I have my family here. We're good. Nicholas, my friend, uh, he's good. I mean, Nicholas and I share cases and stuff. And so it's like we're supporting each other. And then it goes into uh, how we support our community with these videos. You got to think on those levels as well. Uh, and, and you could do it. And we can help each other uh, uh, get, uh, get through this. I'll, uh, I got, I'll, I'll close with a few points. Everything you said is absolutely correct, that. We're so fortunate to be surrounded by some of the strongest human beings that the world has ever seen yeah. uh, because of the stories that we hear. Even if they're not from a country uh, that's in active civil war, has famine or, or is, um, you know, there's some natural disaster, just to leave your culture, your family, your customs, your religion, to come to a new country simply because this country hasn't the idea that maybe you can be better off financially. And that will, of course, take care of your family in ways that uh, you can't do back home. I mean, even that psychological, uh, you know, analysis has to be something that we lean back on and remind ourselves that it's kind of our time to be, you know, the, the immigrant, if you will, because we're yeah. now, like you're saying, shifted from the comforts of what we had to a new normal. And if we want to do right by our clients, if we want to do right by our community, we need to do our best to kind of maintain that strength, maintain that hope. Um, because we have these cases where you're like, wow, you know, it's going to be a very long time. It's going to take A, B, and C, and these things have to break. They say, okay, that's fine. I'll keep working. I'll keep working. I'll keep taking care of our family because it's worth the shot, even if it's a, a small percentage that it's going to work out, right? These, yeah. Maybe it's a <clears throat> PSG claim or what have you. Um, and so I think you're absolutely right. Uh, one thing that, that I would put out to everybody that's watching this or listening is a lot of you and a lot of us have very unique relationships with, with the government, whether it's USCIS, CI, um, CBP, EOIRO, you name it. Um, I think it's really important for us to start looking around in our community and say, who can I help 
with my relationships. Because I think we have, a, uh, I told somebody yesterday or two days ago that during this pandemic, my colleagues' clients are my clients. And if there's something that I have power to do to help them, then I'm going to. And so uh, earlier this week, there was some communication that I helped uh, kind of foster uh, between some colleagues and their clients were stuck in CDJ and Ciudad Juarez mm -hmm. because they went to their uh, IV interview um, at Ciudad Juarez, but then while they were there, the consulate closed. And so essentially they'd been stuck, they were stuck in Mexico for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And so because of some relationships I had, I was able to kind of connect the right people. And uh, one person is already back with her family. She was paroled in Ooh, nice. um, simply because, simply because there was a line of communication that I had that I basically said, hey, colleague, you know, trust me on this. And so I think that's one thing that we could all be looking at is, oh, okay, I'm not getting any new clients. My clients are fine. I'm waiting for things. Yeah, but let me check in with that contact that I have at court or at uh, my, my, you know, my congressional office or my local CBP, you know, deferred. Hey, how are you guys doing? Everything going good? Oh, that's like, oh, hey, just so you know, because they are asking us for information because they are sometimes equally in the dark of what's going on. As you know, John, because you and I go to the same liaison meetings, we know that a lot of times people that face the public don't know us, don't know the full picture. So I think that's one thing that people can be doing. And then I think the, the kind of close, uh, I think this is a time to really play defense and make tough decisions that need to be made if you're a, a, a size firm that is scared about letting people go, you feel like they're part of your family. Um, you know, it's really gut-wrenching to do that. But sometimes you have to prune you know, something to make it grow bigger. And just because it's difficult for you to make these decisions, as we all know, having, you know, if you've ever been in a bad relationship, um, it's going to only get worse the longer you deny the, ine deny the inevitable. Yeah. And this isn't going away anytime soon. So, you know, be courageous. Like you said, John, you know, look at, looking around us, find that hope, uh, do your best to take on this adversity one day at a time. And, in, you know, as I had mentioned, if you need it, reach out to your colleagues, reach out to your friends. You know, you see somebody that's been suggested to you a million times on LinkedIn or somebody that you see on your listservs always comment, hey, reach out to them. Hey, how are you doing? You know, I've never had the time to introduce myself, but, you know, I really admire your work, et cetera, et cetera. Because even that can kind of break up the monotony of thinking yeah. every day is the same. What is it, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday? Um, I think it's up to us to make the most of what's going on and then start thinking about ways to make it better for everybody else. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you said it, so it, it, just reach out. I mean, even to, to call people that you haven't talked to in a while to see how they're doing uh, professionally, personally. Uh, you said it, Absolutely. man. Uh, it's, it's an interesting time, and the most we could do is just make the most of it and, and come out stronger at the end. That's all we can do, and so always focus on that. Nicholas, thanks so much for coming on again this month. We'll definitely do it again soon. Absolutely. You take it easy, John. All my best to you and the family and stay healthy. All right. For sure. Stay on the line. Let me just end this and we'll talk a little bit. Bye everyone. Yes, sir. Bye guys.